Hello everyone and in this video I want to prove a very important theorem concerning limit superior and limit inferior. The theorem is let's say you have a sequence Sn of real numbers and then if the sequence Sn converges to a limit L if and only if if the limit of the sequence limit superior and the limit inferior are the same thing okay that means simply if a sequence is convergent then the limit the limit superior and the limit inferior all three are same and in other words in the reverse way if the limit superior the limit inferior and the limit of the sequence are the same and finite then it is a convergent sequence okay all right so let's prove this Alright, however, if you want to learn more about limit superior and limit inferior, please check out my previous two videos, okay? In those two videos, I explain the intuitive idea behind limit superior and limit inferior with several examples. Alright, now the first thing we are going to do is we are going to prove this in the first, in the forward direction. What do I mean? Let's say, okay, let's say the sequence is convergent, okay? L is finite. Now we want to show that limit supremum and limit inferior both of them are same and they are equal to L. That's what we want to prove first. Now to prove this I'm going to define something here. I'm going to say okay A sub K to be the supremum of some tail of the sequence. So to write some tail of the sequence I say this take the sequence S sub n but take the terms after the kth position of the sequence. So this means A sub k means the supremum of some tail of the sequence. Okay. All right. B sub k let's define it to be the infimum of some tail of the sequence. Okay. So S sub n tail of the sequence we are taking the terms after the kth position of the sequence okay now that's not limit superior or limit inferior it's just i'm defining some supremum um some <laughs> supremum of some tail of the sequence infimum of some tail of the sequence great now at this point let's use the fact that the sequence is convergent to l let's use the definition of limit so what's the definition of limit so let epsilon be greater than zero then there exist capital N greater than or equal greater than zero such that such that for all terms comes after the capital nth term the distance between the term of the sequence minus L minus the limit is less than epsilon now that's straight out from the definition of the limit of the sequence okay all right now I'm going to expand this inequality so if you expand this inequality, what you get is Sn is strictly less than L plus epsilon and Sn is strictly greater than L minus epsilon. All right. Now, this is a very important inequality in our proof. Let's label it. Now, let's try to picturically visualize this because pictures always helps us to understand certain concepts in math, right? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw some terms of the sequence. Now, here I'm going to draw a decreasing sequence but it doesn't need to be decreasing but if it is decreasing it's helpful to visualize uh, what's going on and we know this is convergent okay all right now what does this mean well for so take the tail of the sequence after nth position okay so after the capital nth position okay the terms of the sequence the distance between the terms of the sequence and the limit is less than epsilon. Now, if you try to picturically visualize this inequality one, what it means is this is this is S n, this is S sub n, the tail of the sequence. So the terms of the sequence comes after the nth position. So L plus epsilon is an upper bound for the for this tail of the sequence. That's what this inequality means. Okay. So if you mark L plus epsilon, that's an upper bound for the tail of the sequence. Now guess what? What's L minus epsilon? That's an lower bound for the tail of the sequence. Okay. That's how you visualize this inequality one. All right, again, S sub n is some tail of the sequence and L plus epsilon is an upper bound for the tail of the sequence. L minus epsilon is an lower bound for the um, tail of the sequence. All right, now at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a connection between these guys 
and the definition of the limit. Let's say, okay, let's consider all the k, okay, for all k greater than or equal to capital N. That means this k here. So here also we are defining a tail, right? We said that A sub k is the tail, uh, is the supremum of some tail of the sequence. What tail? Well, let's say that tail comes after capital Nth position, even smaller tail, okay? So let's say this k appears after the nth position. Now think about this. Okay, now I make a, I made a connection between k and n. Connection between two tails. This is the tail we are using to talk about limit superior and limit inferior, which we'll come to it in a minute. And this is the tail that we are talking about for the um, for the limit of the sequence, for the convergence of the sequence. All right. Now here's an interesting fact. Here's what I'm going to write. A sub k is less than or equal to L plus epsilon. Do you agree with this? Now, A sub k is the supremum of the tail comes after nth position. And the supremum cannot exceed L plus epsilon. Remember, L is the limit. Okay? Either it's L plus epsilon or it should be less than L plus epsilon. Right? Okay. And then, guess what? B sub k, okay, it should be, now B sub k is the infimum, so B sub k should be greater than or equal to L minus epsilon, because L minus epsilon is a lower bound for the tail of the sequence, okay, so um, B sub k, that infimum either should be equal to L minus epsilon or should be greater than L minus epsilon. It shouldn't, shouldn't be smaller than L minus epsilon. That's the two crucial facts, okay? Try to understand it. Try, try to pause the video and try to digest that, okay? All right. Now, at this point, now A sub K is just a supremum. B sub K is just the infimum of tail. Now, let's make them limit superior and limit inferior. How do we make them limit superior and limit inferior? Well, what we all what we have to do is move this K towards the end of the sequence, okay? Take the collection of supremums of all, uh, supremum of the tail, lot of tails of the sequence and take the limit, okay? So let's take the limit. So the limit when k goes to infinity of a sub k and that's limit supremum, limit supremum of the, that's the definition of the limit supremum of the sequence. Sn and this we know should be strictly less than L plus epsilon and we know L minus epsilon is strictly less than limit k goes to infinity bk which is actually the limit inferior of the sequence. Okay, right. So from here we moved into here. Right. At this point, now think about this. The left hand side of this inequality doesn't depend on epsilon, right? It has nothing to do with epsilon because epsilon came from the limit of the de definition from the limit of the um, sequence. But this is just limit superior and limit inferior. It has nothing to do with the epsilon. So it's independent of epsilon. And epsilon, since this inequality valid for all epsilon greater than zero, think about this. We use the for all, we use every epsilon. Then we can drop the epsilon and we can say the limit supremum of the sequence is less than or equal to L, well, less than L, all right? And then, well, yeah, less than or equal to L. Now, we can say here also the same thing, the right-hand side of this inequality doesn't depend on epsilon. The limit inferior doesn't depend on epsilon. Here, since this is for all epsilon, we can say L is strictly less than limit inferior of this equals. Now, what does this gives us? Well, limit superior is less than L and limit inferior is greater than L. So, what this means is limit superior of this sequence is smaller than limit inferior, smaller than or equal to limit inferior. Now, this is what we get. Let's call this inequality 3. This is very important. All right. Now, limit superior is smaller than limit inferior. How about, however, however, not how about, however, we know that always limit inferior, this is a fact, limit inferior is less than or equal to limit superior. All right. This we know. 
this is a fact limit superior is consist out of all the supremums upper bound of the tail and limit inferior is consist of um, made out of lower bounds of the sequence so lower bounds are definitely lower than the upper bound so this is an obvious inequality now if you analyze these two inequalities that means limit superior this inequality is like a is less than or equal to b and b is less than or equal to a what this means is a is equal to b so this means limit superior and limit inferior are the same thing and it is equal to l because of this inequality all right okay so what we prove right now is the forward direction where what it means is if the limit of the sequence is l then the limit superior and the limit inferior are same and it's l as well okay all right so now let's prove the other direction this direction is easy now what we want to prove is that if the limit supremum and the limit infimum of the sequence is sub n is equal to l then the limit of the sequence is also l that's what we want to prove okay to prove that let's again start with the definition of a sub k which is the supremum of some tail of the sequence b sub k is actually the infimum of some tail of the sequence then limit supremum means actually limit when k goes to infinity of a k that's the limit supremum okay and that's equal to limit supremum and limit infimum means limit when k goes to infinity of b sub k that's limit infimum right now we know limit superior is l so let's use the definition of limit again for this guy so what does this mean well for the well if you use the definition of limit let epsilon greater than zero then there exists capital n1 such that such that for all the terms calf comes after in one position the distance between a sub k minus the limit is less than epsilon so that's from the definition from the limit because limit superior means you are taking the limit of this a sub k okay right collection of supremums now let's you do the same here also we have a limit okay so let's use the definition of limit there also let epsilon be greater than zero there x is capital n2 such that such that for all the terms comes after nth position in 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 tooth position okay in sub tooth position the distance between b sub k minus l is less than epsilon all right great now what we are going to do is we are going to combine these two definitions okay so we can combine these definitions and we can say n capital n to be the maximum of n sub 1 and n sub 2 and then why is that why are we doing that then we can write a one definition for both of them let epsilon be greater than zero and there exists capital n such that okay such that all the terms comes after the capital nth position a sub k minus l less than all the k right i should have rather than simple n it should be simple k okay it's a tiny mistake in my definition all right for all the k comes after nth position a sub k minus l is less than epsilon and b sub k minus l is less than epsilon now i combine these two definitions and wrote one definition okay now let's try to expand this inequality both inequalities now from this inequality we know a sub k is strictly less than l plus epsilon a sub k is strictly greater than l minus epsilon same here b sub k is strictly less than l plus epsilon and b sub k is strictly greater than l minus epsilon now we can combine again both of these inequalities how we know a sub k is the supremum b sub k is the infimum okay so infimum is greater less than or equal to the supremum right we know this and we know a sub k is bounded above by l plus epsilon and b sub k for sure bounded below by l minus epsilon basically a sub k is actually supremum for some tail of the sequence b sub k is actually an infimum for some tail of the sequence so infimum is strictly infimum is actually less than or equal to the supremum so basically i am using that fact to 
write this one inequality using these two inequalities okay all right now somehow we need to fit our sequence into here because what we want to show at right now is that the limit of the sequence when k goes to infinity limit of the sequence is l that's what i want to show now how can we fit this into this inequality well think about this s sub k is some tail of the sequence okay s sub k is the tail of the sequence coming after the nth position and this tail of the sequence is actually in between b sub k and a sub k right because think about this b sub k is a lower bound for the tail of the sequence so the s sub k is greater than or equal to b sub k because b sub k is a lower bound okay and a sub k is an upper bound for the tail of the sequence so s sub k the tail of the sequence is in between b sub k and a sub k all right and from the rest of the inequality we know b sub k is greater than l minus epsilon a sub k is greater than l uh, a, l plus epsilon is greater than a sub k now from here okay from this inequality i got this new inequality now we can drop a sub k and b sub k and write a simple inequality where s sub k is actually less than l plus epsilon and s sub k is greater than l minus epsilon right okay now this fits to the definition of the limit because think about this how did we start this we started this less epsilon greater than zero there exists capital n such that for k greater than capital n now we can say s sub k minus l is strictly absolute value of s sub k minus l is strictly less than epsilon right we can write this statement using this new inequality so then what this means by the definition of the limit limit of the sequence when k goes to infinity is actually l all right so what we just prove is the fact that if the limit superior and the limit inferior equal to the finite number l then the limit of the sequence is also l that means the sequence is convergent okay all right that's the full proof of this theorem okay all right thank you very much for watching this